French army officer Abdel somberly makes his way to give a press statement regarding the brutal killing of his younger brother, Edir, as a result of police brutality at the Athena Council estate. This is an attempt by the establishment to de-escalate tensions around the country, as it's the third case of police misconduct in less than two months. As he addresses the press, a mob of balaclava youths led by Karim, who is also a brother of Abdel and Edir, attack the police station in which the press briefing is being held. While civilians hectically evacuate themselves from the premise, the mob charge in and start looting and vandalizing the place. A disoriented Abdel calls for his brother as he navigates through the chaos. Concurrently, Karim is also on the move as he orders his unban army. With his direction, they find a safe full of weapons, but can't access it so they load it onto a hijacked police van and escape. The police try to give chase on foot, but the mob taunts them. As they parade down the streets, it is apparent that parts of the city is in chaos. Their van even gets attacked when it gets mistaken for the police, but Karim jumps down to confirm that they are allies. He continues on foot, and from the large number of rallied up youths around, they have arrived at their HQ, the Athena Council Estate. Some build up their defenses with what they can get their hands on. Meanwhile, Kareem is shown the matching sports tracksuits taken from a local football club. This is to further make them indistinguishable from one another when confronted by the police. He's also presented with a walkie-talkie so that he can better coordinate with the large army. As they bring the weapon safe into the building, Kareem is met by some of the older residents. Although they share his grief for his family loss, they are equally worried for their own family's safety as the flats are turning into a war zone. Kareem entrusts them to stay inside and lock all their doors and window. The group of youths move the safe down to the cellar for opening, while another group fool around with the new gear they looted from the police station. Kareem quickly shuts it down, reminding them that until the culprits are brought to justice, they are at war. He leads them to the entrance of the estate where they stand above waiting for the police. Meanwhile, a young officer named Jerome nervously plays with his nails as his unit makes their way to the estate to quell the uprising. They are given a brief before the operation begins. As the officers march out of the van, the media reports on the police concerns regarding a resident of Athena named Sebastian, who is suspected of acts of terrorism in Syria. Jerome looks terrified as they approach the aggressive youths chanting and shooting flares. The police use their riot shields to create a wall looking like some bootleg Spartans as they stand their ground. Meanwhile, Mokhtar, the oldest of the four brothers, watched the commotion from his apartment as his girlfriend complains to him about his behavior as a partner. Someone tell her this ain't the right time to be bringing up their Jerry Springer-level relationship issues. Mokhtar also feels the same, so he shuts her up by grabbing her. He's the local drug dealer, so he demands to know where the rest of his product is after one of his men notices it's not up. She quickly tells them the location. They finish packing it with the intention to move it along with some guns to a more secure place. The police are likely to storm the building at any moment. Mokhtar calls his contact inside the police to let him and his men through when they get to the barrier. They will be disguised as an ambulance rushing someone for emergency treatment. The dealers move through the apartment frantically, but when they prepare to drive out, it's blocked by the youths. One of the lads radios Kareem regarding the situation, but he doubles down on his no one leaves block policy. Mokhtar frustratedly punches him before ordering his men to leave the ambulance. Their new plan is to bury it at a shisha shop on the estate. As the dealers cross the courtyard, a group of youths recognize Mokhtar and start heckling questions about the contents of the bags they're holding. Their numbers start to grow as they get closer to the shisha shop, till the youths rush them to take the guns. Karim shows up to question his older brother on which side he stands with, as their youngest has just been killed, but Mokhtar is more worried about his drugs being found. Karim suspects there might be guns in the bags, but his big bro stops any attempt to grab the bag when he fires his gun. The youth stand down but threaten to come back when they are forced to leave because they receive word that the police are approaching the area. Meanwhile, in the estate mosque, the Muslim men gather to discuss how to navigate through the commotion and get the families out. Abdel is also present, so one man turns his frustrations out on him since his brother is the ringleader in all of this. The army officer stands his ground and demands no one harms Kareem. If anyone does find his brother, they are to bring Kareem before him. The Imam asks his opinion on evacuation. Abdel agrees, but suggests that the fragile should be prioritized. While they do so, he will find his brother and talk to him. The Imam also orders that Sebastian should be found and isolated before he puts people in danger. Abdel begins looking for his brother, but there is too much going on, so he can't get a solid lead on his location. As he moves through the blocks, he comes across Sebastian with earphones on casually doing some gardening in bliss. 
a direct contrast to the scenery around him. They move him to the now empty local nursery. Saber is ordered to stay with him while Abdel continues his search for Karim at the family house. When he gets there, a group prayer is being held for Edir. His mother scolds him a little for being late, but as the prayer continues, Karim also makes his appearance. Something smashes one of the windows in the room, causing the prayers to be cut short as the neighbors begin to evacuate. During the movement, Karim leaves before his older brother can get a hold of him. Abdel asks their sister of his whereabouts, but it turns into a big argument between the two. He storms off and his attention is drawn towards the evacuation route. The army officer pushes his way forward to say his final goodbyes to his mother before she leaves. Shortly after, some of the men aiding in the withdrawal get into an altercation with the police because of a bit of pushing. Meanwhile, Karim watches a live news feed on his phone reporting from his current location. So, he orders some of the boys to throw a fridge from the top floor which nearly hits an advancing police unit. They continue to throw household items at them. That was the final straw. The police begin to retreat as they get bombarded. Back at the top, Karim's hand gets injured when he tries to throw back a flashbang on some Call of Duty behavior, but it explodes in his hand instead. As he makes his way to tend to his wound, he gets a voice message from his mother who is worried about his well-being. While dressing the burn, he overhears reports from a nearby TV regarding the recent findings from the investigation. From the footage circulating online, the police are confident that the attackers were not real police officers, but instead members of a small far-right group. Their main aim was to aggravate the already high tension during the past few weeks. Karim turns the TV off, not wanting to hear that narrative. He begins to cry while he has a rare moment alone, looking at his little brother's picture. He snapped back to the current reality when he receives a message that the cops are making their way into Block 1. Karim quickly sprints to the location with a couple of the lads and enters with a feeble flying kick and pointless punches against the riot shields. But with the help of his soldiers, they manage to push back the police using a big bin. Night falls and the defeated cops regroup behind their vans. Officer Murad makes his way into a detention bus and apologizes to Abdel for his arrest. While releasing him, he requests they let the others go too as they were only trying to help. But Murad explains that an investigation has to be completed before they are released. Abdel demands to go back inside the estate to talk to the youths, but that gets denied as the police are about to lock down the place. No one comes in or out. Their conversation is cut short when Murad is summoned by his commander, but before going, he assures Abdel that he will not get arrested again if he stays in the cop camp. Meanwhile, at Athena, Karim gets his army rallied with a speech about not being the victims anymore and how they will retaliate with the same violence inflicted on them. He reveals his plan to take a cop hostage till their demands are met. In the interim, Jerome along with his police move in large numbers to execute a night raid. Abdel disguises himself as a cop in order to sneak back in. The youth already anticipate the law enforcement's plan and meet them with a volley of flares and fireworks. They manage to grab one cop and quickly drag him away from the commotion. The other police close in fast and begin beating the kidnappers before they can go far. Jerome just stands there overwhelmed and confused on what to do. This guy is not built for this kind of work. Paper pushing would have been better. He tries to redeem himself by joining a beating occurring next to him to gain some brownie points, after which they receive the retreat order. While his fellow officers leave facing the threat, Jerome instead walks in a timid trance with his back facing his attackers. The cops get bombed till they are encircled, Kareem walks towards them dressed like an R&B artist performing on tour and throws a Molotov cocktail which causes some of the cops to be set on fire. The law enforcement makes their final retreat, but the thick smoke causes Jerome to miss the cue so he gets left behind. He realizes this and takes cover in one of the apartment blocks. While getting pursued, he manages to remove some of his police gear and finds a hoodie to blend in a bit more, but he is ultimately cornered by Kareem and his boys. They beat him a little before taking the policeman into custody. Meanwhile, Mokhtar and his men are still digging in the shop to hide their contraband. He frantically calls his contact in the police and aggressively berates him for not getting them out. Kareem has Jerome hostage and releases a video to the police demanding that they identify Eater's murderers and give them life sentences. If not, the hostage will get killed. Murad plays the footage for Abdel to identify the location. He knows the place and makes his way there solo when Murad's back is turned. As Kareem's brother, he gains access to the hostage location, only having to ruffle one guy before entering. He demands his brother let him take the hostage back to the police to stop this from escalating, but Karim wants all the smoke. Abdel just takes Jerome and begins to walk out. 
but Karim starts firing at them, forcing them to run for cover inside the shisha shop with Mokhtar. Abdel doesn't seem moved when his big brother starts getting emotional about the situation. Things take a drastic turn when Mokhtar finds out that Jerome is a cop. He suggests they kill him because he has seen what they are up to. Abdel instead recommends that they save the cop's life, which would make him a hero. He calls his police connect to arrange an evacuation of them and Jerome. Meanwhile, Karim makes his way to the front of the shop with a Molotov cocktail threatening to burn his brothers if they don't hand over his hostage. Karim's boys start to break in through the back door. Abdel warns his little brother that the police are on their way down to their location, so he should dip, but Karim still stays. The cops arrive, Abdel watches on whilst his younger brother tries to confront them, but he is shot dead before he can throw his cocktail. It explodes and burns him. Abdel screams and quickly rushes out to put out the fire that has engulfed his brother's body. Abdel cries over his dead corpse as he moves him to the shop where he covers him with a white sheet. Mokhtar goes over to try and console his brother while suggesting they leave before things start to get hectic. In a fit of rage, Abdel starts repeatedly punching Mokhtar. The youth stand there shocked. Abdel asks anyone who does not want to stay to leave their weapons and go. Losing two brothers to police violence has turned Abdel to the dark side. He takes control of the youths to prepare their offensive. Murad calls him to explain that they didn't send the unit that just killed Karim, but Abdel just cuts the call. With a sinister look on his face, he orders some lads to take Jerome upstairs. Abdel then asks Sebastian to help them open the gun safe Karim took from the police station earlier. He goes upstairs where he hears reports from the news that the violence has spread to at least 30 cities. Jerome tries to share his condolences with Abdel. Meanwhile, Sebastian rigs a mini charge that opens the weapon safe. He begins shearing the guns out and orders the youths to start shooting. Abdel hears screams and gunshots so goes to investigate while asking the residents to evacuate. Sebastian shows that the suspicions about him might have been right as he starts to plant gas bombs in the apartments. Abdel watches as rescuers take Karim's body to safety. He receives a call from Murad telling him to turn himself in. But he is only interested if his brother's murderers have turned themselves in. The cop explains that the culprits are not his men. This gets him agitated as he screams for the ones responsible to be brought before him. He meets Sebastian on his way up, but leaves him to carry on with his plan. Abdel orders one of the lads to start filming whilst he threatens to execute Jerome, but everyone pleads for him not to do it, so he shoots the ground next to him instead. Someone alerts them that Sebastian's plan is to blow up the building, so Jerome leaves with the youths and gets arrested with them. Meanwhile, Sebastian sets up the chargers on the same floor as Abdel, while he lays there accepting his fate. The building explodes as law enforcement investigate the structure. Footage of Eater's lifeless body plays. We see the moments just after the culprits committed the crime. They remove their police gear and make their way to a forest to burn the evidence. A tattoo is revealed on one of the bad actors' necks hinting to it being the work of the far-right group alluded to earlier. This brings the movie to an end. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Thank you and see you on the next one.